AWS has the largest global infrastructure footprint of any cloud provider, with three times more data centers than the nearest competitor. As of October 2024, we have launched 34 regions made up of 108 availability zones. This sounds quite imposing, but let's start with something hopefully quite familiar. Let's look at your existing mission-critical applications that you have running on-premise today. To make this application resilient, you've deployed your application layer to some physical infrastructure in one data center over here. Maybe it's running on Windows or Linux servers, and you've got a database, maybe SQL Server, Oracle, or an open source database running your application in this location. Then you've got another data center over here. You'll have some kind of fiber link between the two to give you a network. And then crucially, to keep the data up to date, you're doing some synchronous replication of the data from one database to the other. The resilience model of this is very simple. If something happens to the first data center, let's say a deployment problem with the application or a physical problem or a flood, then you would flip traffic over to start running your application from the second data center. The application running in the second data center would take over and while your customers might experience a short interruption, the application will come back. This should be a very familiar model for how you run applications today. The data centers will probably be in different geographic locations, maybe tens of kilometers apart, in order to minimize the risk of shared fate. At AWS, we do it a little differently. The first thing we'll do is start building some more data centers. You'll notice we now have three clusters of data centers, some very close together and some further apart. I'm gonna put a circle around these two over here. This is an availability zone. We could put another circle around these cluster data centers. This is AZ2. And then lastly, a circle around here, which is AZ3. So now we've got three clusters of data centers. The data centers within each cluster are close together, but the availability zones themselves are separated to reduce the risk of shared fate. What we need to do now is add a lot more high bandwidth metro fiber links connecting up all the availability zones with lots of redundant paths. And we'll also link these closer data centers together with lots of fiber as well. So now we can finally say this is looking more like the AWS global infrastructure and the beginnings of an AWS region. An AWS region is the description we use for a physical location around the globe where we deploy our infrastructure, usually around a major metropolitan area like London, Washington, or Singapore. We're very particular about how we define a region. We want our customers to have the same setup wherever they are around the globe. Each AWS region consists of at least three availability zones, like I've drawn here. Each availability zone itself consists of at least one data center. In our largest regions, we've got six availability zones, and each of those AZs has lots and lots of data centers in it, beyond 10 in some cases. Now let's talk about the distance between availability zones. You can imagine, if you build two data centers across the street from each other, it's highly likely that if there was a flood, earthquake, tornado, or even a fire, those two data centers are gonna be impacted by the same event, a shared fate. So, we want our availability zones far enough apart that they're not going to be impacted by the same environmental problems. Equally, you don't want them too far apart. To explain why, I'm going to use an example of a payment application. An application designer has two choices when it comes to deploying across multiple data centers. The first model is called asynchronous replication. In this model, when the customer makes a payment, you store it in data center one and immediately send an OK back to the customer. Then you send the update to data center two. At some later point, it will be up to date in both places. The challenge here is that as you move your data centers further apart, there are more chances for the message to data center two to go missing or be duplicated. These are error cases that the application designer has to consider, test for and recover from. Otherwise, your payment might get lost or you may be made twice. Luckily, there is a simpler way. The second model is called synchronous replication. In this model, when the customer makes a payment, you store this first in data center one, then send it to data center two, ensure it is stored there as well, and then send an okay back to the customer. 
That way, you know both copies are fine before sending the customer on their way. The challenge here is that as you move your data centers further apart, the time taken to store the data in both places increases. Imagine if it took one minute every time you made a payment, you would get very frustrated. This explains the upper limit on availability zone distance. They need to be close enough together to allow for synchronous replication. To put it fully, the availability zones are far enough apart to minimize the risk of shared fate from the environmental problems we've talked about, but they're close enough together to allow for synchronous replication. And what that means is close enough to have single digit millisecond latency round trip time between the availability zones, which gives a maximum of 100 kilometers. So there you have it. That's how we build AWS regions. That's how far apart availability zones are. And it's worth mentioning that AWS is the only cloud service provider that has all of its availability zones and regions built in this way. If you take one thing from this, it's that an AWS region is not just one data center. It has a large technology footprint. In the next episode, we're going to dive deep into our data centers and the innovations, investment, and design decisions we've made to help our customers meet resilience requirements.